Welcome back to New Script on the Block. Uh, this is Ashley Hakes with Alyssa Eshelman, Nero Manello, and for the first time, Graham Pritchard! Yay! Wh who is also a member of the Arizona Studios Insert cast. audience clapping. <laughs> um, so today's going to be a little different. Uh, we are going to go over some screenwriting sins. Some sins that not every screenwriter should be doing, but still sometimes do. Um, and uh, we're, we're here to call you out and say stop doing it. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I think this is going to turn into a lively debate on what is and is not actually okay because yeah, I yeah. think it's more like that. Yeah, okay. Because I think okay. that there are some rules that like teachers in school will teach, and and then they don't uphold them. <laughs> yeah, and then no one really. Yeah, either no one upholds them or people are just like, like cursive. Nah, yeah. fuck it. Well, then there's like once <laughs> like you know cursive. the rules, you're allowed to break the rules. <laughs> yeah. So. There well, yeah. Like well, math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Wait, what? Quantum <laughs> physics. <laughs> Fuck Whoa. everything. Okay, hold on. Quantum okay, physics. we're getting out of here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the randomize app, and I'm just going to pick a number between 1 and 23, which is how many potential topics we have, and then I'll grab whichever. Before we actually pick one, though, um, yes, sorry, just okay. for context, Graham and I haven't really been properly um how would you say Intr like introduced i guess it like in the broad spectrum of screenwriting well so, like, hold on oh. okay Graham did go to school for film correct yeah but not for like i took a screenwriting class okay. and um like i had to write a script but they're not like, active I, writers yeah yeah so there you you've go written, okay. like one script ever? yeah like a yeah, well, I mean, I've written, like, short films and stuff, but, yeah. I mean... Oh, please I bring them in. Oh, definitely no. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Graham, we're all open to getting criticism here, and you're just going to have to learn to accept that. <laughs> all right, maybe I'll bring one in one day. Okay. We'll see. All right, um, so I did run the randomize app, okay. and it landed on number nine. Number nine is... Um, Oh my gosh, hold on, sorry. It's on two pages. Can we take oh. turns reading these? Oh, Starting you with want you. To? Starting with you. Okay, 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 <laughs> my bad, okay. Lumpy exposition. Writers often try to ride themselves, rid, oh my god. Writers often try to rid themselves of exposition quickly and early so that they may concentrate on moving the story forward visually. This is a noble intention, but you get lumpy exposition if you try to impart it all at once. Rather than, oh my god, gradually over the course of a story. It is also a poor choice to try and reveal too much information or information that is not crucial. Here's one view of <laughs> taking your lumps. That's what it literally <laughs> says. Sorry. Um, okay, and then there's a character. There's an example. So the character is Mortimer, and he says, uh, "Do you want to read for Mortimer?" Okay, I'm 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 this character uh, for the example of lumpy exposition. Don't you understand? The reason I can't marry Edna is not because I don't love her. When we met seven years ago at the hot dog stand at the Greyhound races, oh I was God, deliriously yeah. happy. Of course, that was before I was involved in a freak anvil accident, which not only <laughs> crippled my left kidney, but my confidence as a soybean future salesman and as a lover. Wow. <laughs> that is a ridiculous example. I'm going to do that next time. I don't think I've ever seen someone do it that bad. I feel no, like no, the feel room like... does that. Anyway, go ahead. No, I felt... Oh, man. Yeah. Well, okay, but that that's sense. an example of like of a bad, bad movie. <laughs> of what not like, to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did not hit her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Go ahead, uh, Ashley. No, I think uh, I think I'm gonna do that next time. Just like completely spew everything, like not yeah. even relevant at all. Hold on. What? No, no, no. Oh. You're you're giving me a debate topic, okay. and I think no, no, no. it can be used for comedic effect. Exposition. Right. Yeah, just like a. Just a throw up. Oh, wait, puking yeah. out exposition. No, no, no. There's a, like there's a word vomit. Word vomit. The okay, but vomit now we're getting into the subject yes. of like style. Well, no, I mean I think we're talking about like more so like parody or satire or something yeah. of that nature. Like, yeah, you can use exposition 
stylistically to add comedic effect. I don't think that's what the rule's referring to, though. I think we're talking about exposition when it's just any regular, like... Conversation. Yeah, any regular conversation or even... Well, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Just monologues or... We read a script, Nero and I, once by someone who will remain unnamed, and I, <laughs> I'm i sure he'll know what I'm talking about, but, like, their use of exposition was primarily, like, let me add a narrator at the beginning to set up the events that happened leading up to the film. And it's, like... I know which one she's well, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an example of, like, what not to do. Like, mm. adding a narrator at the beginning of your film to talk through, or, like, a fake news anchor, or what, whatever you use, like a radio host or something. Mm. If you have one of those at the beginning of your film and it's setting up information the audience has to know to understand, like, who the characters are or why they're doing the things they're doing, mm -hmm. that's not a... Like, that's not acceptable exposition. Like, mm -hmm. that is... Don't hit the I'm table. sorry, I won't hit the table. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, yeah. that's relying on exposition to tell your story for you because you don't know how to do it any other way. Well, like, what I'm getting out of it is, from what Nero read, is it's basically, like, the character's telling its own backstory or their own backstory, and, like, that definitely shouldn't be done. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. Like, he's saying, like, this is what happened, or... Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, backstory is one of the other, I know, topics in there, and I think it's because... Spoilers. Yeah, I know. Well, we, who knows? <laughs> Hopefully we don't get that one as, like, our next it's number. Like the, I'm going to laugh if it the is. the character Graham saying, I'm new here because I just got hired yesterday, or something, something rather, like, just, yeah. just blurt, just vomit out, like, the, the fact that he's new. Or, yeah. like, okay, for instance, I'm just going to, I mean... <laughs> I'm thinking of the Twilight movies, but I don't actually know the dialogue well enough to quote it. So uh -huh. I can't say that this actually happens. Sure. But, like, if the character, because we know she's new to town, like, arrives, and the mm -hmm. first person they meet at school within the first five minutes of the movie, they're like, oh, hey, who are you? Where are you from? Oh, my name is da-da-da. I just transferred here. I was living in Arizona. Uh, my parents split up, and I moved out here. Like, you know, like, that That's type of... That's an everyday of, conversation. Like, but it it's, doesn't sound it's like... It's still exposition. Like, yeah. it's... Ooh, can I, can I bring up something, though? And then we can move yeah. on if no one else has anything about it. Yeah. Do you feel like you encountered that in real life, though? Like, Has anyone life vomited exposition? <laughs> exposition at you? Because I felt like that happened to us with that one guy who will not be named. <laughs> I forgot what his name was, actually. But we ate at uh, Rehab uh, Burger. Oh, Yes. I mean, is not Rehab person, Burger. I was going to say, is this person going to hear this and know you're talking Not about? Rehab Burger, uh, <laughs> in and out. <laughs> Hold on. Just for... <laughs> no, I, I think I get what you're talking about, though. I mean... I mean, not, not the exact scenario you're yeah. talking about, but... This is for the editor. Okay. The guy that we went on the first... On when Graham, like, started. We had that BTS guy. Oh, okay, yeah. He was giving a lot of, like... Personal exposition. Yeah. Like, here's my backstory. Yeah. This is how I got here. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I get that. I mean, I do, like... I think there's a difference between a character who's wordy, which is still annoying, right? Like, let's mm -hmm. be honest. Like, there are things about people that we leave out of movies for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but if we want them to be annoying. Well, yeah, like, if yeah. the character's intentionally annoying and they talk too much, fine. Um... There's this Netflix series called On My Block. I don't know if you guys have checked it out. No, I have Netflix. That <laughs> liar. <laughs> Listeners don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and they have a character like that. Like, that's her trope is, like, she's always talking too much. Mm. But you never hold on her when she's doing that, you know? Like, you, you're like your main character you're following is, like, passing her or ignoring her or making a face. And you're not really paying attention to what the talk, like, overly talkative character is saying because be exhausting and I've, <laughs> I've definitely read scripts where they do that thing where like it's basically like you open the script and you're looking at it and it's like all dialogue, dialogue but massive yeah. chunks of dialogue like if your script looks like that there's something here that isn't right <laughs> and it doesn't matter what the genre is like again unless it's some sort of per like intentionally bad like yeah you know parody or maybe like an homage to like older genres 
I have a question. Yeah. When is exposition, like, when is it considered too much exposition? I, like, I personally say any. But Well, I mean, there, there has to be some sort of context for... I think you can display everything visually. That's my opinion. So even if it is visual... Yeah, I don't think it's exposition. Like, for instance, like, the scenario I gave earlier about the yeah. girl who just moved here. Like, yeah. if at the beginning of the movie, like, we saw she's in a bad mood, there's a bunch of moving boxes, she's, you know, obviously transitioning into a new home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when she goes to leave, her dad, like, gets a call from the mom and is, like, arguing on the phone, but, but it's in the background and it's not really the forefront of the scene as mm -hmm. she's, like, packing up to go to school. We learned everything we learned in the conversation she had with her friend at school before she's even gotten there and it's all been visual. Like, we don't mm -hmm. need the character to say something to know most of it. Okay. So the go good rule of thumb is mm -hmm. there's too much exposition if you already know something, but the thing, the movie tells you again. Tells you anyway. If it, okay. if it tells you again, if mm -hmm. again is used, okay. then it's too much. Got it. Which is valid for verbal, but the rule of thirds still applies. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, well, I like the rule of thirds. It's broken up, though. Like, the yeah. rule of thirds is, like, throughout the movie, not, like, all in, like, well, and again, the rule of thirds is not dialogue dependent, well, right? Like, yeah. something can come up three could times be, in a story. The rule of thirds, for those of you listening <laughs> who are new to screenwriting, yes. is a rule that says um, to have it resonate with your audience, there has to be, it's basically setting something up and then fulfilling it. So there should be something showing up multiple times before it creates a big impact. So, for instance, let's say at the end of the movie, two characters break up. Like, two instances have to happen before at least that kind of set the tone for this is inevitably going to end badly. But more information is given, even if it's, like, within what we already know, right? I'm sorry, I don't think I understand the question. Okay, so, like, if... I'm sorry, are we are we on this subject way too long, or can I keep going? You can go ahead, man. Okay, There's all right. No rules. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> This I is did the it first three time times, so <laughs> this will be my <laughs> last. Talk time. about this one subject the whole time if we. Have I know, to. yeah. This is a new a new segment in our journey, so we can be as long as we want. Never mind, because I forgot. Oh, we well can then. move on. Um, well, as far as the rule of thirds, like you know, you said that it doesn't have to be verbal, but it could be. Like the one that that sticks out in my mind right away is um, Princess and the Frog, when they say like. Oh, it's not slime, it's mucus. Yeah. They say it three times and at the end it's yeah. fulfilling because she ends up like defeating. But that's the also bad guy. more like Okay. Yes, <laughs> I agree. But it's also used for comedy. Well, yes. Yeah. I know. Just like how like a stand up comedian when they re bring up something they brought up at the beginning, at the beginning. of their stand up, it's like, Oh my god, it's so much funnier now because they said that once before. Yeah, yeah. And it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it works in film, too. I, I think that that's so effective because, again, it's, like, comedically driven. Mm -hmm. I think if you had, like, someone repeatedly saying the same thing multiple times in, like, a drama, it would be more like, okay, we get we it. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Anybody else have any other take on it? Because we can go to the next one or if you want to keep going on this one. What else? What did it say in the uh, just uh, in the in the thing? Something about the description, or yeah, what do you mean? the second part of it. Um, Something about like here. Let me see. This isn't okay. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> Ashley's reading right now. You guys can't see it, but that's what's happening. <laughs> Taking your lumps. That part reminded me of um, Gaston's song, because they actually say that. Which is not completely relevant to the subject it of exposition. Hit the button. Oh my god, okay, I'm going to hit that button. Activate noise. Okay. It's three. Number three. Do you want to give it to Graham or Ashley, since you two are... Next to each other? Next to each other. You haven't... Uh, you haven't talked much this this time, so I'll let you I'm not going to say anything for this one. Too much or little detail in narrative. There's an old screenwriting joke that illustrates the failure um, of too little detail in the narrative or of a script. Exterior field 
tent day. Napoleon stands at his tent, uh, generals at his side. Napoleon, I think I, sh I shall have some breakfast. Behind him, a battle of Waterloo rages. Waterloo? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. We that's right. right. Um, of course, screen writers can hear the opposite <laughs> direction, giving us too much detail, either slowing the flow of with non-essential action or describing and not allowing the director a chance to use his or her imagination. Um, Cleet pauses, thinking hard. He bites his lip in a... a all right, can I have someone else read for me? <laughs> I hate reading aloud. <laughs> you said yes to this pause at concept, and like 90% of it is us reading shit out loud. Hey, to be fair, I've never seen this word before. What, what word what is, is it? it? <gasps> Jinx. 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 Jinx again! <laughs> Abject? I'm, I'm not going to sing on this show. Okay. okay. Abject. I'll just sing all alone. Um, Abject, not object, okay. abject. It's the parenthesis, it's... <laughs> abject. Uh, His lip in abject. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I guess that's a abject word. desperation. I, whoever wrote <laughs> this is probably a lot smarter than, than we are. I don't know, I've never... I think I know who wrote this. You know who wrote this? Is it you? No. I didn't, I didn't write this. No, that was a callback to what you said earlier. See, I'm doing it again. I like what your comedian says. No, Wait, I'm, I'm lost. Okay. No, you said there was a guy who, like, writes with too much, like, exposition, and he oh. uses big words. Oh, okay. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall saying something about using too many big words, but yeah. I, no, I'm adding I think to that's fact. also true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway. Um, too, I think I get what it's what saying, though. The narrative. It's just too much detail. Yeah. It's like exposition. Or too little. Yeah. But not being said. It's just exposition on the script. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Like instead of the character saying something, it's when your description of what's going on is either is either too much information or too little, which is hard. Like how yeah, do you how, know where the lines at? Yeah. How do you when you're describing a person, say okay, yeah. say I'm describing you. Yeah. What should I say? You know, I think that Anything that helps develop, like, the state of the character's emotional being, okay. I think is relevant. Okay. But I feel like, for instance, getting too specific about costume to me is like, yo, leave that to wardrobe. Like, you're the writer. Mm. Stop trying to do everybody else's so then, job. <laughs> so then I shouldn't say you're wearing a button-up shirt with a blazer-type jacket yeah, and jeans Yeah, you could just say heels, like. she's dressed professionally, she's... Her personality is, or well, you wouldn't say her personality is, but she's wearing like light colors because that again adds to the personality. She is dressed mm. smartly. You can't mm, say yeah. L Y. We'll oh see yeah, about no that. L Y words. <laughs> 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 we'll get into that. Says you. We'll get into that later. <laughs> You're right. I don't know what I'm talking about because I've never do read we wanna, script. Do hey, that's one. too much exposition, Ashley. <laughs> oh shit, my bad. <laughs> We're just gonna start roasting each other. <laughs> what this turns into. All right, I'm, I'm just, do we want to, do you guys have anything else to say about that Wait, one? Wait, I, I mean, I, I don't, okay. I don't know how, what else there is to say other than, like, when, when should it be a, like, don't do it? Can I, can I, can I um, add something into that? Yeah. Sure. For me as a writer, Neil Romanello, <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to, like, think within the mindset and this might just be me and it might be completely wrong to think this way, mm -hmm. but I think in terms of whoever's reading would hate to read large like really walls of bulky. text. Yeah. Yeah. If it's like this large wall of text, that means nothing was said within, I don't know, an hour. Yeah. That's you know, overemphasizing. Plus it's yeah. scary to just look at. Like if yeah. you're a producer or like an investor and you get a script plopped on your desk and you mm -hmm. see like giant bulks of explanation to the scene or actions like yeah i'd be like i like going in my trash bin. yeah <laughs> like, i like to break down whatever description of action or description of whatever they are whatever they're doing or wherever they're at i like to at least break it down in smaller chunks so yeah. maybe that's a good rule of thumb for you if you feel like you built a wall of text yeah. donald trump <laughs> anyway whoa <laughs> you mean a wall of tweets Ah, there it is. Cut that out. <laughs> we don't that was want, a good joke, anyway. We don't want a bunch of 
like, it's not politically driven. No one said a particular opinion. Yeah, it's true. We were completely unbiased about the situation. We were just bringing it up. That's exposition, Alyssa. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and it was too much. It Stop was, it. it. It was too much. Anyway, no big walls of chunks suck. Big walls of text. I don't know. Wait, hold on. <laughs> big, big walls of of text. My bad. Big walls of text. Yeah. Is and I too know much. that you handle that by like breaking up the paragraph by adding extra spaces between like certain chunks of text. But I still think also just read it through out loud a couple times and be willing to chop stuff down. Yes. But I agree, like anything that helps us understand the emotional motivations of the scene, like would be relevant or anything that physically has to happen or be seen mm-hmm. to provide context to the audience that's also relevant okay this podcast is brought to you by arizona studios arizona studios a full service video content specialist we're here to illuminate your message and compel your audience to take the right action for more information head to our website at arizonastudios.com and be sure to tune in for more content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. I think of an example, I, uh, but I we can't. had like I'm not going to say their name again. We had a person we were working with on a film and we were doing the post for it and something we told them was, "Hey, we need you to provide us your logline because we're going to use that as a filter for everything." Like does it do justice to the log line? If it doesn't, if it's not contributing to the main plot in its simplest form, it's non essential. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I feel like, a healthy rule of thumb if you're not really sure how to trim things down. Is it too, too much to ask what a log line is for our listeners who maybe don't know what a log line is? How about before this thing ends? Because isn't it in there? Like, I don't want it to get selected and we have to say it again. Well, we the, one it. of the <laughs> rules is... All right, um, fine. Let's do it. <laughs> You're right. All right. Graham. Ashley is right. I'm sorry. Graham, do you want to explain what a log line is? Um, a log line is pretty much... A uh, quick elevator pitch. I'm stealing this from. Um, oh, what's this description? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's basically um, shorter than an elevator pitch to describe what's going on throughout the story. Um, it's giving like a brief description of, of um, what your story is going to be about. Without so, giving away anything. Yeah. Exactly. The yeah. elements I normally tell like clients if they're new to writing is you. Know, it should include who the main characters character is or who the main characters are and it doesn't have to be specific you could say a group of friends would count as saying your main character Mm -hmm. um their goal or objective a group of friends go on a road trip um to you know their last road trip together over the summer and then some sort of hook you know when the paranormal intervenes or whatever. Nice cabin in the hey. woods. <laughs> that would be a fun one. Maybe not for this this episode, yeah. mm-hmm. but maybe another filler episode. This is a filler episode. This <gasps> is a filler episode. Um, Please keep listening. Though. We can we can uh, <laughs> we can do one where we're just like we have to come up with log our own log unique line. log lines for stuff that already exists or maybe not exist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the yeah. log line for Stranger Things. Mm. Like, can someone do that? That's some improv that? skills, though. Yeah. <laughs> we are not actors. <laughs> <laughs> a group of kids this summer takes a drastic turn into sci-fi horror when they meet a telekinesis kid. I don't know. That was... You planned that. That was wordy. No. I did not plan no. that. Maybe. Okay. Do we want to move on to the next one? Yes. Because we've got about, like, 15 minutes left. Yeah. Uh, number 22, and this is the title that Nero liked the least. Uh-oh. Flashbacks, dream sequences, and narrators. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, I liked that one. That was a great <clears throat> title, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. A flashback is a tool used to show something that has occurred in the past. Dream sequences are scenes that are in some way separated from reality, often having a different appearance or intentionally dis indistinguishable from reality. They can illustrate deeper meaning to the character's story or emotions. Narration can be a method of presenting a character, a character's inner thought in a stylistic approach, creating a storyteller character or 
to work around showing visible text on screen. When used properly, these tools can be can become device. Wait, no. What? Are you sure, it's when used poorly. What did I say? Properly. Oh shit, my. That bad. would be really shit advice. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Uh, cut that out, please. I've already had flub ups today. Uh, when used poorly, these tools can become device. So am I, am I saying well, that Well, right? devices, I'm assuming. Device? Just say devices. Devices? You should say whatever makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm worried. As a general this. rule of thumb, if spelling or grammar are incorrect, we should just automatically try to fix it. Well, I don't know what word that is supposed to be. Is it is devices. Devices. Okay. When used poorly, these tools can become devices to fill obvious plot holes or add unnecessary backstory. All right, so I need a summary of what the hell I just heard. <laughs> so they're all different things, and they can all be used in different ways, uh -huh. but the way that they're depicted... That's the phone. The phone is ringing. Shit. Should we cut? I'm going to walk away. Okay. You guys talk about... You explain to Nero. Okay. No, Alyssa, that dinosaur. <laughs> that pterodactyl. <laughs> anyway. That was a pterodactyl. That was a pterodactyl. Just... <laughs> Okay. That sounded really bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cut that out, please. Um, wait, so... So, okay. So, like, a flashback is to kind of put into context, like, what is happening to a character, and, you know, maybe the, the audience needs a little bit more more context. If you use it wrong, it just is, like, it's kind of, like, along those lines of exposition, like, it's mm. too much. Okay. So a flashback is to give the audience something more, like additional information that we don't know. And it's uh, information that's going to be used for the overall plot. Yeah. Um, Have you seen any of the Oceans movies? Oceans 11, 10, however many there are? I haven't. Well then. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I feel like that's, I don't know, it could be a good um, kind of, like, flashback thing. Because they, like, they do the heist, and then they go back and say and show how they did it. But they don't show any sort of, like, um, it's not... Like, they show, they go through the heist, and then they show this is actually how we pulled it off. Like, someone was doing something else while this heist was going on, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All that you miss, Lissa. Yeah. We're um, explaining flashbacks. So oh, okay. I brought up um, Oceans 10, 12, yeah. 13, whatever. I have literally not seen any of those movies. But God yeah, damn I mean, it. perfect I'm, examples. I'm assuming I'm sure. yes, I've seen them. Okay, good. Graham, then. <laughs> you explained have you seen it. Them? No. No. Nero hasn't either? No. What? What? <laughs> I've, I've seen are we using <laughs> are we using a good example of a flashback or a bad example of a flashback? I think it's a good example. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good example. So basically they go through a heist. I'm yeah. re-saying this for I mean Yeah, for no no no, it's fine. Um they go through a heist and you're like, holy shit, they are we allowed to cuss? Yes. <laughs> Alright. So holy shit, they pulled that off and then they go back and they're like explaining how how they pulled it off, but yeah. also like showing us more context. Is that actually a I'm sorry, are we talking about a flashback, though, or are we talking about, like, jumping around in the timeline, which I feel like, to me, is a little different. Like, you're... I mean, I guess it is kind of jumping around, but also, like, it's after the fact, so they're, like, explaining how they did it. It is like, the like they like, are. And that's what flashbacks are for. They right? are explaining it, so, like... I do and don't agree with that, because I think okay. of, like, for instance, like, I think of, like, a show like This Is Us... I don't consider what's happening in that show to be flashbacks. Like, yes, it happened in the past, but there are parallel stories happening. One is happening, you know, 10 years ago. One is happening today. But they're, you know, revolving around the same characters or similar characters. Like, if it's a story and we're gaining new information about what happened in the past, like, you know, four hours ago, two days ago, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that necessarily qualifies as a flashback. I feel like a flashback is, like, an instance where... We're following the path of a story, and in order to get us up to speed on elements of the story, 
for a sh period of time in the piece, we have to go back. Not like the mass of the story takes place in the past. But it's not being, not all of it is in okay. the past. Like, throughout the whole movie, you're seeing them prepare for this giant event. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it happens and you're like, oh, dang. It it's actually like so they fast. yeah and like and and it they did it something somehow they miraculously were able to get this done yeah and then after the fact it then goes through exactly what they did and it's like in short spurts of this is what happened when they did this this is what they were doing when this was going on this is what was going on behind the scenes of this altercation or whatever yeah. and it's not though it's not the whole piece it's only it. like the last bit and it makes sense that like during the events it would go really fast because that's how it would work in real life mm -hmm. and then post the events we go back and break down every little thing about it because that's the story right so in that context yeah like it makes sense okay it's hard to explain Without when you haven't, haven't seen it. Sorry, seen it. I'll go watch an Oceans movie. It's fine. Sometimes Actually, you know which one was really good that I liked? Uh, was the, the one with... Um, Ocean's 8. Ocean's 8, yeah. I liked that one. Is that Ladies Ocean? Yes. Yeah, so they did 11, 12, and 13 with men, and then 8 with women. 8 with yeah. the women. So, yeah. Mm. But there are women in the other ones, right? They are. They're just not, They're like, women. the predominant cast. Correct. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that eventually. <laughs> No, that's cool. Uh, okay. What else is in that? Let me see. Flashbacks, dream sequences. Dream sequences. And um, narrations. narrations, like narrators, like having a narrator voice in your story. Is this thing just like defining what's what and how to use it? I think so, because I do think there are sins to these. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, again, we talked about narrator earlier being used for exposition versus like adding a style. Mm-hmm. Um, like, if it's storytelling and there's a narrator, or, like, the narrator makes sense at the end of the story, like, dare I reference How I Met Your Mother, like, <laughs> <laughs> despite the shit ending, like, the, the narrator plays a role in the plot mm -hmm. and is a big part of the impact at the end of the show, mm -hmm. so it makes sense that it's narrated. Um, yeah. I have one for a dream sequence that I think kind of I like and I think works well okay I could be wrong I don't know um I mean you can't it's your opinion you can't be wrong about your opinion uh I beg to differ <laughs> internet anyway um, um actually exactly <laughs> yeah. uh in Blade Runner where he has the dream sequences of the unicorn like yeah. you know he what does that mean I we don't know until the very end if you see the specific cut of, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the right cut in yeah. the way of, oh, sorry, that was my opinion. Um, that was your opinion, but yeah, it's okay. It's and okay. that's an actual fact. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. The, yeah, like those, those sequences where it's like, yeah, he doesn't know if those, if that's even real. Like why? if they're memories or if they're dreams. Yeah. yeah. So it's, that falls along the line of like, yeah, it's going to be a dream sequence because, it yeah. works with the story if there's a payoff at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's no payoff at the end, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Well, and that's why that one cut is the better one, because you yeah. do get the payoff. You get the payoff, yeah. 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 In my opinion. In my opinion. <laughs> to emphasize. I heard yes. that, I haven't watched it yet, but I was talking to you guys earlier about um, that new horror film, The Nightingale, and it's by the same female director who did The Babadook. <laughs> Or Baba Duke. I, Baba don't know, Duke. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, Baba but Duke. it was a good movie. Except for that weird dinosaur y sound at the end. It's weird. But but the point is is that movie I hear very strongly like uses dream sequences as a tool in the to aid the plot. Hmm. Yeah. I will not be seeing it, so <laughs> let me know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> all of you horror fans. Yeah. Make sure to send Ashley clips from all your favorite scary movies. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will greatly appreciate it if you don't. <laughs> um, okay, anybody got anything else to add? Like good good and or bad uses of flashback dream sequences or narrators? No. Are you what's your opinion? Like you just think that it's always like fine or 
what's fine. Like, all of them. Like, using narration, flashbacks, like... I think they're fine to use. Use them however you want. (laughs) I mean... Nightmares on Elm Street did it. (laughs) And so did Scott Pilgrim. So it's like... Those, that's part of the plot. Yeah. Or at least with Nightmare on Elm Street, it is part of the plot. It is part of the plot. Yeah. Using what, though? Dream sequences? Everything. Yeah. Oh, everything? That's true. Scott Pilgrim actually does all of that. That's true. Right? They they have a, it, has a it has a narrator. It has a narrator. It has flashbacks. Wait, does it? Does it? Um, yeah, I think they do go back to a few moments. I feel like... Like they go back to someone else's reaction during the same time. I very much recall, like, a scene with Knives where, like, we go back. Oh, yeah. Okay, for instance, the hair dyeing scene. So Knives shows up and her hair is all different, and then they say something about it, and then it flashes back to her, like, bitching to her friend while she's dyeing her hair. It doesn't. If you haven't seen Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> you're completely lost, but go watch Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> but she... Wait, hold she's on. It in doesn't. The, she's in the window looking at, at Scott and Ramona. And they're together, and then that's oh, when it cuts then to. Oh, she goes to oh dying her God. God. And then and it's, so it's not a flashback. What the, that is, is hipster wait, wait, chick. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim does use flashbacks regularly. They're just animated because it's all of the. Yeah, I broke up those, are flashbacks. those are yeah. flashbacks. Those are flashbacks. That's true. Scott Pilgrim has done all of it. <laughs> flashbacks, dreams, and narration. But they work it all into the plot. Like the story wouldn't be the way that it is if it didn't have those things. So that's, that's true. what I'm I think saying. The issue it's fine. Is, yeah. I think the issue is if it's not, if you, you don't need it to tell the story. Like if you yeah, could do it you, another way, then yeah. you don't. Wait. You don't, it doesn't need it either. Inception's done it too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> huh? All of um, it? Well, definitely narration? dream sequences. There's narration yeah. in Inception. Well, I'm trying to think. It's been so long since it's I've It's been a really Inception. long time. I don't think there is. <laughs> Greg's gonna debate. Yes, this. there is actually. Oh, I'm debating that there is narration. When? Oh my god! At like the end? It's when Cobb, Dom Cobb, is Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Yeah. He is narrating over his own flashback. Well, I think so there isn't actually that narration? is narration because the top spinning at the end. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure there's narration over that too. You know what I hate. And, like on the subject of narration I hate it when there isn't narration like the entire movie and then like the last five seconds they're like let's throw a narration here and it's like fuck you hey that's what happened in Blade Runner the one of the bad cuts of Blade oh, Runner one of the bad cuts. because uh, Deckard he um, he narrates over um, that moment where um, the one bad guy Roy Batty when he dies mm-hmm. there's a there's a version of Blade Runner where they brought Harrison Ford back to read over yeah. that scene. Really? And he says it with such, like, monotoneness because he did not want to do it. <laughs> yeah. So they, like, held a gun to his head and was yeah. like, all right, I guess I'll read it. <laughs> I'm okay if you do it and it fits the rules of thirds. Like, if you've done it three times in the movie, I can be okay with it, even if you didn't have narration, like, through the entire movie. Well, that's like when we did um, Murder on the Cookie Express. Yeah. When all of a sudden Nero has an internal thought of, this isn't him. It's like, wait, why are you now saying it at this point? You mm-hmm. hadn't been, it, we like haven't been inside your head, your head the until now. Like, this is really off. Go so. watch Murder on the Cookie Express at Arizona Studios <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> shameless self-plug. So, yeah, shameless yeah. plug. <laughs> also brought to you by Arizona Studios, yeah. our sponsor for this podcast. <laughs> Insert sponsorship. <laughs> All right. Um, Before you know it, we'll be... The alarm did just go off, and our next guest is waiting for us to hop into our next recording session. So anybody got any thoughts to wrap up this conversation about uh, about screenwriting sins? Or... Can't wait to discuss more and to be enlightened because I don't know much of these. <laughs> you can do anything you want. Don't let your dreams die. <laughs> but don't do some things. <laughs> I mean, you can do anything you want. Just some of it won't be any good. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, that is fine. <laughs> yeah, you, you can write however you want to write. Learn the hard way, homie. Yeah. <laughs> that's how most of us do it anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, you gotta write some stinkers to get to something. To really get the jewels. Some of a semi okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for listening to New Script on the Block. Oh, we'll do this again a couple episodes from now. So. Another filter. <laughs> Please tune in anyways. <laughs> we like to think we're fun people. 
<laughs> All right, you'll hear us next time. Bye.